Hello and welcome to another Key Smash Studios video. Today we're going to be talking about the basics of port forwarding. I'm primarily making this video because I get a lot of questions on our Discord about how to port forward a game server, but it's not going to specifically be about game servers, but more about the basics of how internet ports work in the first place. So I'm going to use examples of game servers, but this can apply to anything from remote desktop to SMP mail servers or anything like that. If we think about how the World Wide Web works, we have all these computers connected to a network, and we're told that they just kind of like make this big, vast, expensive thing, and it's got a bunch of information on it. And that's true, but mm, that's not quite how it works. So let's say that we have this PC here, and this PC is sending information out to the web to try to get to a game server. So let's say you're hosting a Call of Duty game or something like that. And you're trying to play it online, so it sends that information up to the server. The server says, yep, I hear you. You're online with us. We've made a connection. So it sends that information back out to the web. So it sends it to the other computers that are connected to the same match. So that way, everyone in the match knows exactly where every other player is, assuming no one is cheating. And that's great, that's a fine example of how games work, but game servers are set up specifically to take in information like that. That's a fantastic use for those game servers, we don't have any issues with that at all. The issue is, that's not actually what's happening here. What's actually happening here is that we have the internet and the World Wide Web, everything that's cool there, we've got other computers, websites, servers, game servers, all this stuff is in the internet. And we also have our local area network. Now, this is assuming that most of you are at home. Some of you might be at work and that gets a little more complicated with subnets and things of that nature. But assuming you're at home, you have all these different devices and they're attached to your router. And what actually happens is that all your computers your cell phones, anything that's on your local network, your local area network, it's called LAN. Anything on your LAN talks exclusively to the router, and it does not go outside of that. And the router then talks to the World Wide Web. And that's great. What that does is it actually provides us a lot of protection. Everything is stored under a public IP address. So when you go to a website, the website says, hey, there's somebody connecting to me somebody from this public IP address. And what it actually is, is it's, it's looking at the router. It's saying the router is the one asking for information from this website. When you go to YouTube, it pulls down the page and it says, okay, router at this public IP address, here it is. And then the router's job is to figure out which computer or device on the network is trying to view that page and disperse the information from there. So we don't actually have this thing where we have the computer that goes to the server. What actually happens is the computer goes to the router, the router goes to the server. It's actually not that much slower than a direct connection. And once the server gets the information, it can see the public address of the router. So it sends information back to the router and the router sends the information back to the PC. And we have this direct connection between the server and the computer without the dangers of a direct connection. So what happens when we have a PC that wants to contact our PC? What happens when we have something that wants to remote into our, our desktop and we don't know what it is? What actually happens is that it can only see our public IP address. So it goes to our public IP address and we've got this fancy defense called a firewall. And the firewall protects us from random attacks. And the firewall is very good at its job and it says not today. And it sends that computer back where it came from. And it can't get into your network. It can't get onto your computer. And that is fantastic for security. And that's great. But what happens if we need to actually get the information from that other computer up to our computer and be able to send information back? Well, that's where port forwarding comes in. Port forwarding is sort of like a gap, a tunnel through a firewall. As long as you have the right information going through a port, it will allow information to go through to a specific computer. So let's explore how this works 
with an example of a Minecraft server. I've put the port that is the default port on Minecraft servers here. It is 25565. Now, if some random computer still tries to access our network, our firewall is still able to say, no, you still can't get in. But if a computer comes through and says, hey, I'm told to come to this IP address, I have this port number, and I'm giving it the right information, i.e. Minecraft server information, then the router decides to send that information to the computer, which has already been prearranged. The computer processes that information, sends it back, and connects it back to the other computer. So in a port forwarding sense, we get all the ease of access of all these other computers still able to come access our server, but we also get all the protections of a firewall. We don't disable our firewall, and we're very thankful for that because the firewall is very good at its job. If you have any questions on how port forwarding works, or if you would like a different example, please let me know down in the comments below. As always, you can ask us questions in our Discord. You can find a link in the description below. If you found this video to be helpful, please consider liking or commenting or subscribing. All those things really do help us. If you found this video to be really helpful, take a look in the description below and you'll find a Patreon link where you can show your support. As always, don't forget to follow us on social media, Twitch, things of that nature. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz, and hopefully we'll see you next week.